In this presentation, we will explore the SharePoint Services Central Administration website. This website is used to configure the SharePoint Services, Service Accounts, SharePoint Database Settings, SharePoint Web Applications, and the SharePoint Shared Service Provider. The Central Administration pages are very powerful, and access to them should be restricted to only those SharePoint administrators who have both the authority and the knowledge to configure high-level SharePoint settings. Let's get started. You enter the Central Administration website separately from entering a portal home. Instead of launching the browser and navigating to a user portal site, instead I'm going to use the Start All Programs, and there's a program group for Moss called Microsoft Office Server. Within that program group, there is a direct link to the SharePoint 3.0 Central Administration website. If you know the custom port number or remember the custom port number that you used during MOS installation, you can always launch the Central Admin website by simply launching an Internet Explorer browser and putting in the appropriate URL, which will be your machine's machine name, followed by the port call for the custom port number. Here we are at the Central Administration homepage. Notice it is laid out as a SharePoint site, because it is. We have global navigation tabs across the top. We have a quick launch bar down the left side. We have web parts displaying certain lists for us. It is a SharePoint website. You see your welcome, my site, and my links in the top, and a site actions over here on the right. Now again, I remind you that the only folks who are going to be able to actually visit Central Administration are those folks who have administrative capabilities within SharePoint. Starting here at the home page, the administrator task list will display for you items that will quickly help you configure your SharePoint server. Central administration is all about high level configuration settings that will take effect and influence all sites throughout your entire SharePoint installation. The operations tab contains a list of links that will help you configure your server or server farm such as changing your farm topology or which services are running on each server or your search behavior or logging behavior this is all about server farm configuration the application management tab helps you configure your IIS web application that is supporting SharePoint In the quick launch bar on the left, you also have a shared services administration link. This is where you would go to configure settings and parameters about the shared service provider that you modified during installation. A shared service provider is the uppermost level of services that supports an entire web application's site collections. Most companies will be happy with only one shared service provider. This allows their SharePoint administrator to centrally administer settings that will affect all of the sites in all of the site collections. If, however, your company is very dispersed, it may be beneficial to set up more than one shared service provider, allowing you to have different shared service configuration settings per farm. Taking a look at my one and only shared service provider, whose name is Shared Services 1, I'm asked to authenticate in. And you can see that the Shared Services administration page is laid out a bit differently. It looks more like a traditional WSS administration page. We still have the global navigation across the top, but it has been modified to include only this website in below. And the quick launch bar on the left has certainly also been modified. We have a link back to central administration. And we have categories of hyperlinks that will help us configure our shared service. The shared service provider gives the entire site collection configuration about Excel services, the business data catalog if you're using that in Enterprise Edition of Moss, configuring your audiences for content targeting, 
usage reports that will show you how many users are visiting your sites, search configuration for configuring the search center and indexing and crawling behavior, and then user profiles in my site settings that will help you with personalization throughout all of the sites. Returning back to the central administration, heading into the operations tab, as an example, I'm going to configure my security configuration parameter to block certain file types from any and all sites throughout this SharePoint installation. Heading into blocked file types, notice there is already a list of file types that are not allowed to be uploaded to the SharePoint sites. As we look at this list, I do not see MP3 in the list. Now MP3 file extensions are common file extensions for music files. I don't want my end users to be able to upload music to the SharePoint sites. I'm going to add an additional MP3 file type to the list. Moving down to the next available line, adding in the MP3 extension, I click OK to that and notice what it says, this prevents these file types from being saved or retrieved from any site on this entire server. Security configuration is only one of the sections of operation settings. You can also back up and restore your sites. You can also upgrade from previous versions and set up your diagnostic and usage reporting. Moving over to the application management tab, this tab allows you to configure settings for the web applications and components that are installed on this server or throughout the server farm. For instance, if we take a look at SharePoint Web Application Management section, I'm going under SharePoint Web Application Management to set up my outgoing email settings. This will allow me to configure an outbound SMTP server for my web application. Notice you can configure a separate SMTP email server for each individual web app. All of your web applications do not have to use the same exact SMTP server. I'll put in the name of the SMTP server. Specify the email address that should appear in the from line. And if necessary, specify a different reply to address that will appear on any emails being sent out by the SharePoint server. This allows my SharePoint server's web application to send email on behalf of user interaction with the various SharePoint sites. For instance, if users subscribe to alerts or if they are going to email a, another member when they have added the member to a website, the SharePoint server now has the capability to send out email. Returning to home, you can clearly see how the Operations tab is separated to configure your SharePoint services running on the server farm, whereas Application Management tab lays out various configuration parameters for the web application as it relates to IIS. Microsoft strongly encourages you to use the Central Administration website for all SharePoint administration, even the administration of the IIS websites, known as web applications, and the SQL Server databases that contain your SharePoint content, such as the configuration databases and WSS content databases. In this presentation, we explored the SharePoint Services Central Administration website, a separate website in a separate web application that was created during initial installation of MOS 2007. The Central Administration website 
allows you to configure settings and parameters about your entire SharePoint installation, the SQL databases supporting SharePoint, as well as the web applications created for SharePoint in IIS. For more information on each individual configuration parameter, please stay tuned to SharePointScreencast.com for more intermediate and advanced videos.